See, it's possible to be holy. All things are possible to God if you apply yourself to the Scriptures. Let's look at it here again. Verse 2 especially. Elect according to the full knowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit and unto obedience in sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. What do those scriptures mean here today? Applying the blood of Jesus Christ is the word of God. It's applying it to your life. You will go your whole life and suffer your whole entire life. Multiply. So grace be on. 
First, to elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience to sprinkle of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. We know in first John 1 it says God is light is the word, and there is no darkness at all. There's no darkness in this word. If you walk in darkness, you lie and not the truth. But if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, which is the word of God, you have fellowship with one another. If you walk in this Bible, you have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin. He that says he has no sin is a liar, and the truth is not within him. He that confesses sin, he is faithful and just to forgive his sins and to cleanse him from all unrighteousness. Listen, the Spirit is directly me telling you that if you are suffering, not in God's will, it's because you're being disobedient, it's a form of witchcraft. And you're in trouble. Hear me now. If you're not in God's will, witchcraft has you. And I'm telling you what. Witchcraft is wicked. Whatever's in your mind going through you this week, outside of God's will, that's witchcraft. And there are people praying against you. Once they know, they see you come to these churches. Once they know you're serving God, they're going to pray that Satan gets your soul. Oh, yeah. I had somebody come tell me just the other day, no lie. They came and told me personally, one on the side, they said, I want to let you know something. We have followers. Have you noticed you were following? I said, yeah. I've been followed by a million people lately. We're following you. And I said, what are you talking about? Witchcraft. Trying to ruin the work that I'm doing. As I'm out on the streets and I'm witnessing people coming by, speaking backwards in the language of English, speaking to the Bible backwards that are around and trying to destroy the work of God that's being done on the streets. Listen to this. Last night I stopped with a group of children. They were sitting there. They had their little iPods out. Beautiful kids. They're looking for a church to come to. Got my dog with me. All of a sudden they're sitting there about his ice cream parlor, and I start telling them about Jesus and I'm reading the word to them. My dog starts going crazy because another dog came by. Starts barking like crazy. This lady comes around the corner, all filled with Satan, and says, what are you doing? This is inappropriate. I said, what's inappropriate? Speaking about God to children, you know? And see, the, see, the dog was barking prior to that, so I guess she got nervous about the dog. The enemy attacked what was being done. We all got the website and everything before I left. So we kept going, and we went to the next person, and the next person. I met a guy from another country who was on vacation and told him about Jesus. Get, at least six to ten people get the website every time I go on the streets like that. And I use the dog because everybody likes dogs and they talk to them. They talk to me about the dog. But I'm saying the enemy's real. He's out there. Listen, I'm telling you now. Hear this now. Hear the Spirit. Let the Spirit have its way. There are people praying that your soul goes to hell. Hear me. Hear me now. There are people sacrificing animals and drinking blood and doing things against your life. If you come and know Jesus Christ, you're going to believe God and want you to go to hell. I tell you the truth, people. There are people, I, I could not believe it. A witch came up to me and said to me, we are followers. Do you notice you've been followed? And I said, yeah, it's been going on for like seven years. They said, yeah, don't worry. We're going to continue to follow you. I said, they keep coming and follow me. Because God's got a plan for you too. Right? Neither height nor depth nor principalities nor things present nor things to come can ever separate you from the love of God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Those who strive against you shall be made as nothing, and those that continue shall surely perish. The word of God speaks to that. You guys know it right now. I'm not going to mention it, but a family member just came against me this week tried to hurt me. Right? He tried to make me get confused so I couldn't preach the word of God today. I was the devil using that person. Someone dear to my heart was trying to mess my world up. Was it possible? Not through Jesus Christ. Let's move on. Verse 3. Blessed be the God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to the abundance of mercy hath begotten us again unto the living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Blessed be the God, our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto the living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Blessed be our Father that rose up Jesus Christ from the dead. You know, if God the Father is the number one, Jesus is the Son, He let Him be your Lord and Savior. But God, there's only one Father in heaven. That's God. He's the number one. Number one for us. Let's move on. To an, an, an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for what? You. Are you listening to this? If you do God's will, this is what it says. Listen, only if you're in God's will. Listen, only if you're holy is He is holy. The only holiness I have is speaking God's word faithfully and by God. I must decrease, He must increase. If you're not out there speaking God's word, if you're not out there sharing the stuff that's on the internet, at least if you're not doing something for 
is now. I said this a couple times here. 45 billion years from now, you're going to be somewhere. 45 billion years from now, you're going to be somewhere. Imagine being 45 billion years later on, and you're in heaven. How great it's going to be. Imagine being in hell. 45 billion years from now. How's that going to feel? 45, didn't say million, 100,000. 45 billion years from now. That's heaven. Listen to what it says now. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and faded, not away. Says, here what it says. We're for you greatly rejoiced through now for a 
way he sees it, if need be, you are having his tremendous temptations. Listen, some of you are going through some really heavy stuff right now. Very, very heavy temptations. Do you know why that is? Because the enemy has people praying that you don't make it. There are people in here right now that tell me their minds are clean. They can't take it anymore. They can't even handle life anymore. Guess why? Because you're not choosing to be holy as he is holy. And God is demanding for you to surrender that thing that you're struggling with. And you can't. So what happens? You get in trouble when you leave church. Something happens back. Because people are praying against your soul. Let's go on. That the trial of your faith be much more precious, verse 7, of gold that perishes, though we try to fire, <clears throat> might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Listen, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes. Here it gold perishes. Imagine that. Gold perishes. Though it be tried with fire, but be found unto what? Praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. God is saying, listen, this is what he's saying. Here's the spirit. He's saying, listen, here, here are heavy this. I'm going to pick a few of you from heaven. Which ones will you be? Hear that? Many are called. Many are called. Only a few are chosen. I'm going to pick a couple of you. Which one will it be? That's how serious you gotta look at this. He said, be as you run your race and only one wins it and the rest of her. What would you do if God Jesus Christ walked into this place and told you, I want you to run a turkey hill, every one of you, and whatever way one wins, I'm gonna let you go to heaven and the rest of you I'm gonna burn in hell. Go. How fast would you run? 45 billion years. He says, where will you be in the next 45 billion years? Only one's going to win it. That's what it says in the Bible. Oh, run this race as there's only one. One of them wins the prize. That's how we have to run this race. But what happens? We get caught up in materials. We get caught up in thinking about our problems. We get caught up in thinking about our mates. We get caught up in thinking about troubles and sorrows, and God said that's a bunch of junk compared to living with me for eternity. To never die. To live forever. Never, ever die. What's worth it? Not to be holy as he is holy. Let's move on. Let's close this up. Verse 8. Whom having not seen ye love, and whom thou down ye see him not, yet believe ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of joy. Whom, whom having not seen ye love, and whom thou down ye see him not, yet believe ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of joy. God is saying, You might not see me, but you listen, hear the spirit. God is saying, I have showed you myself, my love for you so many times. I have 
So when Reagan here came off the plane, right in here, as I say that, to bear witness to the Spirit telling him, kiss the ground, thank you, Jesus, I'm alive. I just saw so many people die. Life is good, people. Let's go on to eight. Whom have, having not seen you love, you love him. And whom thou, though you see him not, you believe. And you rejoice with unspeakable, un, with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Listen, people. God knows whether you love him. God knows whether you want to live forever. Listen, listen, hear this now. You know, hear the Spirit of God. He's in my belly today. He's all over my belly. I'm telling you, he's all over me. Listen. God knows and you know whether you're striving for him. Let me ask you a question today. Are you striving good enough to make it to the kingdom of you know that you can today? Do you know that you can go to hell but you're not striving hard enough today? Because you better get ready. Because many are called, but few are chosen. The gates of hell are wide, the gates of heaven are now, and there's only few that are the party. Listen, hell is in the form of a woman. Hear it now. And heaven is in the form of a woman. It's, just, it's the body of a woman. The, the body of Satan is made in a woman. Body. That's what it's made of. Hell is formed of a woman. It said she widens her mouth for more souls every day, and she's never full. That's what the scriptures say. She's never full. She wants more and more souls. Heaven is built like the shape of a woman to be the bride of Christ. So when you make it there, can you imagine how well God the Father is going to treat? Can you imagine the luxuriousness of what she's going to have? Let me tell you something, ladies. There's no man on this earth ever going to treat you like God's going to treat you when you get home to your father. No one's going to treat you like God's going to treat you when you get into his kingdom. The, the, the gates are made of pearls. The gates are made of huge pearls, gigantic. God. It says, eyes have never seen, nor ears have never heard, eyes have never seen, nor ears have never heard, but God has prepared for those that love him. God says, I want you to find the most beautiful thing that you can ever imagine, and it's not. Prepare for what I got for you. Eyes have never seen, nor ears have never heard, but God has prepared for those that love him. He says, listen, I'm telling you people, be holy as I am holy. I recommend that you be holy as I am holy. If you want to be holy, you hang on to the pleasures of the world, you already need to be loving up. There's going to be worse things to come. God wants you to be holy. He has great plans for you, people. He has beautiful things on the other side waiting for you. Let's move on. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Desire the pleasures for a short season of the world and this all. 
want to look at it. He spends all his money and ends up in a pig's pen. This is a relationship between God and the Son, really, symbolically God. So the child comes back and says, I'll just be his maid. I'll just clean his house, whatever it takes. I'll just be a servant. What happens? What does the Father God say to you? You're the prodigal son. Rob says it all the time. Prodigal son returning. But here we go. Here it is now. It's not to joke about for this part. The son comes through the field, and the dad comes running through the field. God is running towards you because you're repentant. He leaves the other 99 sheep behind, and he's running to you, daughter, because he loves you. You're stopping all that foolishness that you were doing out there, carousing with nasty people, son or whatever, and he's running towards you. And he tells the other son, go and get my ring, my gold ring, the best one I got, and go get my king's jacket and bring it for my daughter as we turn. My son has returned to the kingdom of God. My child is back home. Kill him without his death, because everything that I have is now yours. And the, uh, the older son comes out jealous and says, Dad, how can you do this? I served you all these years, and now Oh, how could you do things for God? 
smart enough to say more than a word is worth more than thousands of pieces in silver and gold. Verse 11. Servants were not man or man at the time of his spirit, which was then they signify when they testify before the suffering of Christ and the glory that should come. Should follow twelve unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you. But the Holy Ghost sent them out from heaven which things the angel desire to look unto you. We're preaching with the Holy Ghost today. Do you know why? Because remember this. Imagine this. Many would call few children. If only a few would go here. Which ones would it be? Could you raise your hand and say, Pastor, I know it's me. I know it. I have been so good. That's all I do is things for God. I'm not always doing my thing, 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 doing my thing. I'm not always doing my thing. I'm doing his thing. That's how you know you're ready. You got to be doing his thing, not our thing. Verse 12.
conversation, let's be holy people. Let's make it to heaven. Because it is written, be holy for I am one. Holy. God says, be holy. He's not saying do it on your own. He's saying, listen to the preacher. Get in my word. Stay in the house of God. Do what I ask you to do or burn. He doesn't want that. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. God didn't ask us to be holy if we couldn't be holy. But we're not holy in ourselves. We're holy in my own. Yeah. <laughs>
received by the traditions of your what? Fathers. For with the precious blood of Christ, listen, you were redeemed with the what? Precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish or spot. You were redeemed by the precious blood of Christ, the word of God, the word of God as a lamb without blemish, without spot. Jesus is saying, I can get the change. Let me finish the work. Get out of the way. Get your nasty, corruptible, lustful, perverted, sick, life-minded this out of the way. Get it out of the way. That goes for me too. Every person in this place, we struggle with the lusts of the flesh. They rage on the inner man and the inner woman while the witchcraft people are praying, saying, you're going right. We want it. Right on target, Satan. Don't worry, we got this one. They're not getting free. That's serious. Listen. But with the precious blood of Christ, as a land without blemish, without spot, who verily was ordained for the foundations of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you. Jesus was manifested. He's saying, let me tell you something. If you get in my word, as I tell you to do, I'm going to set you free on the bus. I'm going to call you. Remember, God made heaven and God made hell. He made all principalities and all thing, things for his good pleasure. You hear that? God made heaven and hell and all principalities and all things for his good pleasure. He said, I wore a sword here. God's a loving God. Hear this now. Last one of verses. He said, I wore a sword. I didn't come to bring peace. I came to separate my sheep. So let me ask you a question today. Are you a sheep or you a goat? You know what you are. Hmm? Are you bullheaded, smacking heads with people? Smacking heads with people? Goat head? The eyes of a goat are wicked. Tell me they're not. I don't even like them with goat's eyes. They're so wicked. Snake's eyes, even goats and snake's eyes are practically the same. You ever notice that? Goat's eyes and snake's eyes are pretty much the same. Let's finish. 20. For verily was it foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, and raised him up from the dead, believe in God, and gave him glory, that he, your faith and hope might be in what? God. Should it be in your pleasures? Listen, if you haven't been faithful in this word, if you haven't been faithful in the word of God, if your pleasures have been in your and when we leave here today, you choose not to come up here, it's up to you. Don't worry, your pleasure's going to eat you alive. Yeah? It's going to be like laying in the bed of bed bugs. They're going to get you. Huh? Like walking in a house filled with fleas. Don't worry, pleasure's going to get you. You ever been eaten up by fleas on your legs? You ever had something like that happen? It's unbelievable. That's what pleasure does, it eats you alive. It seems good for a season. But then your conscience gets to you, you feel sick, you feel no more moral, you know you're doing wrong, you say to yourself, oh my God, look at me. And then you start worrying what people are thinking, and then people start laughing around you, whatever happens around you, you start thinking they're doing it to you, because your conscience doesn't feel good, because you're not being holy as he is holy. You hear that now? I used to do it in some sweet prayer of God's in my place right now, you know, but, but you're lost.
seek ye have purified your souls and obey the truth through the Spirit unto unfailing love of the brethren, seeing that ye love one another with a lot, per pure heart fervently. What's it saying as we close? Seeing you have purified your souls, purified your souls with what? And obey the truth through what? The Spirit. What is the Spirit? It's the Word of God. John 6, 63, it is the Spirit that quickened the Word of God. The flesh prophets, nothing except the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Are you with me? The word is spirit and life. Last verse is there. See so you have pure right your souls and you obey the truth. Hear what it says. See that you do. See, God is a God. Listen, here, here. God is a general. You better believe it. God is a general. Right? We're Catholics. The guys that preach God's word, do God's word out of work, we're Catholics. That's what God's called is Catholic. He's our general. Harry, God is our general. Yes or no? He's our general. You better believe it. He is the cap. He is the general of the holy armies of the world. He said, I'm invincible to that. Who can fight me? I'm invincible. He said, bring your pastors. Bring any. Bring, I don't care who they bring. I'm invincible to that. And he says, I don't sleep, people. I never slept. God never slept one day ever in all of eternity. He says, I don't slumber. I don't slumber. I don't fall asleep. Invisible now. God is invisible now. That's what it says. See me have purified your souls and obey the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brother. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Last verses. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, not of the pleasures of this world that are going to eat you alive. Hear it. After a while, God can't take it no more. He kicks you like this into a pack of piranhas. You ever, see a, you ever see a cow eaten or a bull up by piranhas? It only takes five minutes. The whole entire cow is gone by a swarm of piranhas. That's what happens when us eat like piranhas. We eat you. Let's eat you. We eat you alive. We know what it's like. There we go. Be born again out of trouble, see, but I'm in trouble. By the word of God, it's living in the body of Listen. Being born again and not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. The word is incorruptible by the word of God. Being born again. Which live in the body of Christ. So get in this word and let it be being born again. Verse 24. For all flesh is grass, for all flesh is grass, for all the glory of man is the flower of grass. So all of our, listen, you ever seen a lawn cut? That's the glory. It's over with now. That, that one's not beautiful the way it was. You know what I would say? I always get about it. I just think about it more and more. It must be the grasshoppers and the ants when that hour's coming. That's hell on earth for them, right? As you go through that grass and you're in the middle of it, and you hear the rubber coming, and it's getting closer and closer, and those blades are moving at 752,000 miles. You know why I see birds land afterwards, right? Because all the mosquitoes heads are cut off, all the moss, all the ants are cut in half, judgment day on the lawn. Never think of that, did you? I thought of that one time. Judgment day when the mower starts up, huh? They start running, don't they? Huh? And that mower gets close and close. I'm like, why am I out in the middle? If I would have stayed near the edge, I could have made it to the woods. And that's what we do with our lusts and our pleasures. We stay out in the middle. Being born again, that a crop of seed, but in front by the word of God, was moved about it forever. Verse 4, 24 For all flesh and grass, and all the glory of man, as flower of grass, the grass withered, and the flower therefore what? Falleth away. So guess what? We die all the time. Our lusts fade away. Huh? Listen, hear the Spirit as we close. When you die, what are people going to say about you? What's your testimony going to be? When somebody comes past your grave, they're going to go, be simple there. Come in, folks. Cut. Hmm? Are they going to come by and say, that person changed more lives? They changed their way. They changed so many lives that they'll 
bring souls up to the altar, Father God, that need to repent, that have been running a race, but they've been jogging, stopping and sitting on a bench once in a while, that haven't run it like they're the only one that's going to win the race, God, that many are called, few are chosen. Father, if there are people here that want to make it to heaven and want to live forever, that want salvation, as your word was telling us today, that truly want to love you and not just say it, we pray that you would touch their hearts to come up today to this altar and have prayer for Jesus. Amen. The Lord calls you to be altar, Michael. Give yourself a play of music. The Lord's calling you out today. Please come up. Father, in Jesus' name, we rebuke Satan. We come against every spirit. 